What are you doing? I'm Edward Gunhands. <laughs> What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna be talking about some PCCs. And not just any pistol caliber carbines, we're gonna be talking about the five best under $1,000. Now, we are going to be ranking these with a lot of different categories, but reliability is gonna be absolutely paramount, followed by availability, accessories, accuracy, recoil and pulse, and overall usability for you guys. Now, some of the pros and cons of a pistol caliber carbine are going to be a little bit different than some other guns. And if you're not unfamiliar with what a pistol caliber carbine even is, it is essentially a rifle or pistol configuration in a semi-automatic design that is chambered in nine millimeter. So think of a semi-automatic sub gun or maybe a semi-auto nine millimeter rifle, all kind of apply into that umbrella category uh, just because we don't really know what to call them all. So a lot of pistol caliber carbines are actually pistol caliber pistols. So it's kind of weird, but it is what it is. Now, some of the pros and cons are going to be, first off, are that the ammunition is cheap. You can shoot steel very close. It is quieter indoors if you have to shoot it indoors even quieter when it's suppressed than something like a 5.56 because generally you can get subsonic ammunition and it's very, very quiet. Also, they're usually very low recoil, smaller, lighter guns uh, that can be used by smaller, lighter statured people and those people need to defend themselves as well. On top of that, they usually look really cool and they also have a very Call of Duty feel to them. Now, there are some cons to it. Obviously, your ballistic capability is going to be less uh, than a standard rifle. And in some cases, ergonomics can be a little bit weird with some of the uh, pistol caliber carbines. But for the most part, they have more pros than they do cons, in my personal opinion. Even ballistically speaking, that could actually be an advantage. If I live in a house like mine, for example, where I live in the middle of nowhere and there isn't a person for over a mile, well, a rifle or even a 7.62 rifle, for example, can be a good choice for home defense because I don't have to worry about over penetration at all plus i have long distance issues out here on a ranch like shooting coyotes and things that somebody in an apartment complex or living in an urban area may not your primary concern as far as home defense might be over penetration hitting that next apartment building hitting that house next to you and in that case frangible or hollow points out of a nine millimeter pistol caliber carbine penetrate very very few layers of drywall by comparison to something like an average full metal jacket from a 223 or a 762 or even something heavier like a 300 blackout. So, I like the pistol caliber carbine, but what are the best ones under $1,000? Because I think that's really the limit of what most people want to pay for a gun. And somewhere between the three, $400 range and the $1,000 range, you can get yourself five pistol caliber carbines that will really last you a lifetime. Now, before we get to number five, I'd really like you to go down and click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell if you're interested in future videos. I also do want to mention my Patreon supporters. You guys sponsored almost all the guns and ammunition on the channel. I appreciate Appreciate that a lot. If you want to help out the channel, that really is the best way to do it. Just go to the link in the description and sign up. And finally, that description is a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. It could really use your help. So uh, please get out and click that link and donate to those kids. In at number five, we have a gun that I don't have on the table, but I really do like, and that's gonna be the Ruger PC Carbine. Now, the Ruger PC Carbine has a lot of things going for it, but its modularity and its ability to transform into other things is actually pretty impressive. They not only have takedown models, but they have models with M-lock rails, they have models with collapsible stocks, and they have lots of models with traditional style rifle stocks, which I actually really prefer. Uh, the original PC Carbine was kind of modeled after the famous 1022. It has a blowback style action, and it even has very similar controls, allowing you to go back and forth uh, between the two very seamlessly. And that's actually really important because the 1022 is probably the highest selling 22 of all time, and one of the most sold and most used rifles of all time. So now you have your 22, and you can upgrade to a nine millimeter for a little bit more ballistic performance, home defense, stuff like that. Now, the Ruger PC Carbine is uh, a 16 inch variant. That's the one I had, but they also come with charger models with shorter uh, barrels and different pistol brace configurations. The larger style gun that I had was 6.8 pounds and it had very low recoil even though it had a blowback action partly because of all the weight and mass that it has. But it still shot very very well uh, especially due to those traditional controls. Now the MSRP on the Ruger PC Carbine says 750 on their website but I've seen them as low as $500 depending on what type of model you want and that's pretty impressive considering that it even comes with a pick 
Picatinny rail, M-lock uh, rail for lights and lasers and all that stuff. You put a sling on it and you can use it for anything that you really want, including some varmint hunting. It comes in different colors, but I think one of the real cool features of the PC Carbine is that it has uh, interchangeable mag wells. So you can actually use Glock magazines, you can use Ruger magazines, you can use M&P magazines, whatever you want, you just have to buy the adapter. And I personally think that's really cool, coming from a guy that has like 100 Glock mags, it was really useful to change that right away from the Ruger magazine well that I didn't have to the Glock magazine well that I do have. Something like that is awesome and I think that's gonna become a mainstay on pistol caliber carbines to come. But for $500, it's damn hard to beat the Ruger PC carbine, especially considering the customer service track record, reliability, and accuracy that the gun has, along with the overall sales that the gun has. It really shows how happy people are with it. In at number four is a gun that I was showing you earlier. Now this is the Strybog SP9A1. And it actually has a, a foldable uh, brace on the back of it that I took off. Uh, the tail hook brace that I had on the back of this, uh, I actually put on my uh, Thompson, believe it or not. My Thompson has a pistol brace on it currently. The Strybog actually is a pretty cheap and popular pistol caliber carbine as well. A lot of good features on this gun. Uh, it doesn't look like a traditional rifle like the PC carbine does. It looks like a sub gun and I like that. Uh, this one right here that I have in front of me I got for around $500 and you can still get them for around that price. It has a front charging handle that you can put on either side. I'm actually running on the right right now like an AK so it gives me more room for my hand. This particular model is the blowback design. I know they have the Gen 3. I think this is Gen 2. I know they have the Gen 3 that has the roller delayed system but from all accounts of what I've heard about it it's very unreliable and what I like about the Strybog is it's extremely reliable. We have a thousand around through this no problems whatsoever and on top of that even though it is a blowback design it has super low recoil my personal opinion you can see in the shooting footage just how fast I can shoot this gun I actually use this so much that I even have a tri-lug uh, mount on it so I can put my suppressors on it because it's reliable whether it's suppressed or not. It's a big advantage of PCs that you can literally throw a suppressor on them and they can be super, super quiet right out of the gate. We got a pick rail on top. We have these super cool included uh, foldable iron sights which I use frequently because I move optics around. It has a pretty good trigger, uh, ambi controls, and it has a beveled magwell. Overall, as far as the Grand Power Strybog goes, for around the five to $700 mark, depending on on what model you get. Not only do you get a really cool looking gun, but you get a very capable and reliable and accurate gun as well with good ballistic performance even though it's short because it does have an eight inch barrel, which is about all you need for a nine millimeter cartridge to begin with. So I like the Strybog a lot and if you're looking to get into kind of a cheap sub gun that's very reliable and proven, this is a really good way to go. In at number three is another gun we don't have on the table, but it is my my personal favorite AR9. And the reason for that is because of how cheap that it actually is. I'm talking about the Freedom Ordnance FX9. I've had this gun for about two years, but I still remember how much I like it. It had a very low recoil and pulse, came with lots of really good features. I got mine for around 600 bucks, but I checked recently and it's coming in around $800. It has an eight inch barrel. It's a blowback operated, very reliable system that takes Glock mags, which is really cool, because again, I have like a hundred of those. It comes with a collapsible SBA3 brace, an M-lock rail, a hand stop, and mine even came with iron sights and, an, and a Magpul uh, grip, which is pretty cool. Uh, the uh, triggers are interchangeable with AR, so you can put a Geisy trigger, whatever you want in there, which is also really nice, especially if you want to get your hyperfire on or maybe even your binary on, depending on where you're at. The gun itself has an 8-inch barrel, as I said, which is about all the ballistic performance you need, just like the Strybog. It has a 5.5 pound overall weight, making it very light and maneuverable. It also has a billet receiver making it look very cool along with operating really well. The thing I like about the uh, Freedom Ordnance FX9 was A, that it was really cheap, B, it came with a lot of accessories, but unlike a lot of AR9s, especially some home-built ones, it was stupid reliable. Out of a thousand rounds we shot through the gun, I think we actually had about 1,200 rounds through the gun, we only had one failure and that was on uh, Phoenix Ammunition remanufactured, which is notoriously unreliable in some guns and the fact that that's literally all we shot through the gun besides some defense 
expensive ammo. I think uh, critical defense, as far as my notes said, uh, it was stupid reliable through the whole testing, accurate, low recoil, and overall, a pretty badass little nine millimeter AR. Obviously, you can suppress it as well if you want to, and it will still have all the same controls and performance of your AR, but it will just be in the nine millimeter instead of a 223. Now, in at number two, we have another nine millimeter AR, and this one is my, one of my absolute personal favorite guns of all time. I got this gun about three years ago, and it has been through some shit. I think there's like 3,000 rounds now down on the X-Star EP9. And that's not like 3,000 YouTube rounds. I actually shot 3,000 rounds. It takes a while. Uh, that's why the gun looks so beat up. And uh, we've lubed it quite a few times, but I've technically never cleaned it, which is really saying something. I just keep pouring lube on it. I kind of wipe it off every once in a while. Oh, sounds sexy. But this thing is beat up and we just keep running like a sewing machine and it keeps on ticking. And that's saying a lot for the MSRP of around $400. Uh, this is a blowback operated nine millimeter AR, similar to the FX9, but a little bit different because this one only weighs four pounds because it has a Palmer upper and lower receiver. Now, in my personal opinion, that can be a detriment for overall durability because uh, the bang stuff, the explosions next to your face, I'll go right there with that Palmer receiver. Although in my personal experience with this gun, I've seen no problems with it whatsoever. Now, it does come with some dated features out of the factory, but you can get M-lock rails and you can get brakes and you can get suppressor mounts and all that stuff and some braces as well if you're interested. Mine did come with the B5 Systems grip, which I like a lot, and it came with the QD system. Also, a rail on top for optics, and what I really like about the gun is the side charging capability, which is very, very cool. It also has parts interchangeability with AR-15 I actually, believe it or not, have a Geisley trigger <laughs> in my $400 X-Star EP9. And some would say that's way overkill, and you would be absolutely right, put a $200 trigger in a $400 gun. But the reality is, is I got to liking this gun so much. The thing does not have ambi controls, but you can theoretically put an ambi safety in there. And it also has a beveled magwell, and it does take Glock mag, similar to the FX9. Again, adding to my Glock magazine addiction that is absolutely absurd at this point. At some point, I'm gonna have to make a fort out of them or something like that. Overall, for the money, the X-Star EP9 is arguably the best PCC I've ever had. Now, are you gonna have that experience? I hope so. I've had a lot of X-Star EP9 owners weigh in in the comment section. I put this gun in a lot of videos over the years, and I haven't seen really anyone who is disappointed. And that's pretty uncommon for me, because usually when I have a lot of malfunctions in a gun, you can see the comments come out and all the people talking about their, their experiences. I just have not seen anyone talk about problems with the X-Star EP9, and for a 400 and some dollar gun, that's just really fucking impressive. Before we get to number one, I do wanna do one quick honorable mention. It is a great gun for the money, don't get me wrong, but I just couldn't put it in this top five compared to all these guns because I would choose all these guns before this gun, but I do wanna mention the High Point Carbine. Now the High Point Carbine gets a lot of shit and a lot of people hate on that gun, but if you use the appropriate magazines, appropriate ammunition, and you have a little bit of luck, that $300 nine millimeter carbine actually functions really, really well. It has low recoil, it's mostly reliable, and it's actually Actually really accurate. Now the ergonomics on it kind of suck and the overall durability and build quality are pretty trash, but for $300 it's hard to argue it's probably the best 9mm PCC in its price range. That being said, compared to these guns, these guns are just overall more durable, more reliable, and easier to use, so it is what it is. Now we're going to get into number one, and how did I choose it? Well, I thought to myself, if I had all five of these guns on the table and I had to do some serious shit right now, which one would I pick? And there's only one answer, the Scorpion. The CZ Scorpion is very popular. The Evo, this is actually the new one. This is the CZ Scorpion 3 Plus. Uh, I don't actually think if your budget is $1,000 you can afford this one, but you can certainly afford the original, the uh, standard A1 or whatever it is with the standard uh, Picatinny rail. I had that version and I love that version. It works off the same action. This one just has a little bit different features, but it is the one I have currently. Uh, the CZ Scorpion is a nine millimeter blowback operated pistol caliber carbine like most of the other guns on the table. The difference between this gun and those guns is that this one not only has a pretty serious military and police track record, but it also has a, a track record for being one of the most reliable nine millimeter guns on earth. Uh, it's included in many conversations with the Uzi, the MP5, and so on. I've had no malfunctions with my CZ Scorpions with any type of ammo, with any type of magazine. On top of being super reliable, it's super durable, 
available. It works in adverse conditions and the magazines and accessories are often very cheap and available, which is really nice. Again, there is some ergonomic issues with this Easy Scorpion out of the box that they did fix with the newer models, uh, including the ambi safety is a little bit rough, uh, but the pistol grip and things like that can obviously all be fixed. The trigger is really nice, the accuracy is amazing, and the recoil and pulse, even though it's a blowback operated system, is really soft and it's really easy to get repeat hits with the uh, CZ Scorpion. Now again, you can get models with M-Lock rails and get them with different uh, muzzle devices. All of these guns can be found with one half by 28 threads. So you can easily suppress them as well. This new one here has ambi controls on either side and it has this really, really slick SBA3 or uh, SB tactical brace. So you can keep it in a very small package and then when you want to, you can Call of Duty flip that bitch out and use it uh, when you want. Now, not only is it very ergonomic and it's very small and it's very easy to either conceal or store for when you need it, but it also has a front charging handle very similar to an MP5 that you can slap, which I absolutely fucking love, and it is very lightweight at around five pounds. So you, this one here I think has a barrel length of around three and a half or four, but you can get them all the way up to eight, and I would recommend getting a longer barreled version because why the hell would you get a PCC that has less ballistic capabilities than the handgun that you carry? That's just my personal opinion, but I do like these shorties every once in a while for how they look and how they overall feel. And especially if you're gonna put a suppressor on it, you put uh, six inches on the gun and then it's out to about here and it's still a very manageable and short overall platform that you can CQB with or do whatever you're gonna do with it. So I choose the Scorpion because of the track record and the reliability. Honestly, it has shittier ergonomics than some of the other guns on the table, and it has a little bit more recoil than maybe something like the Strybog, but this gun I absolutely trust with my life, and at the end of the day, that's all that counts. Uh, if you have any uh, guns you wanna add to the list or you want guns that you haven't seen on my channel that you wanna see me review, by all means, leave them in the comment section below. If you hated this video, leave it in the comment section below as well. Trust me, I'll fight with you. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. Fly murderer, get those flies. How many fucking flies have you killed? I've killed a bunch. Looks like a genocide. Wow, okay.